This land is your land. Welcome to Marky's World. I'm your host, Marky Shan. And today is a little bit different because I have a new, I have a co-host with me, first of all. Look at him. <laughs> That's Dr. Ross. Dr. Ross. Dr. Ross, uh, he's a doctor in, uh, I forgot what actually. Broadcasting and communications. Broadcasting and communications. And he will be with me every fourth Wednesday, unless it changes his mind. <laughs> so he'll be with me every fourth Wednesday. Well, I am so glad that you're co-hosting with me today. Sometimes we'll have guests on that we could talk to and interview at the same time. And then sometimes, like today, I just wanted you to meet him and get a chance to understand what type of person that he is, because he's, he's really a uh, very intellectual person, very philosophical, and very spiritual person. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. You ain't missed the cue. I would have raised my hand. <laughs> I'm still, I know I'm in school, so I always get, get the attention. <laughs> we get out of order. That's what we learned in school, and we didn't take it no further. Well, and I wanted to say that I'm glad that you're doing a whole lot better. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So, um, how, how do you want me to introduce you? Because it's our first show together now. Queen Island. I just, I, you know, I'm random. I don't have, I don't I, like I'll say Dr. Ross. Yes, ma'am. Should I say Dr. Ross? Just say Dr. Ross. And then, throw them off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throw them all around. So they go walk the past you and say, what is she just saying? I say Dr. Ross. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? <laughs> See, to go to those kind of measures to come from where I come from, a child would have to go through a destiny change. Uh, a yeah, yeah, because when the creator show you think your heart is, he'll put it on you. He'll keep you around, but if you keep playing and not doing what you're supposed to for him, he'll, you know, he'll stop you. Mm -hmm. They say I didn't have enough minerals in my body, so now I got a mineral schedule. But um, I seen my life flash in front of me when I fell on my porch. Oh, that uh, underwear? Yeah. Hold and on. I hold, seen, hold on. Uh, hold on. Because we got to talk about all that. We got lots to talk about. Yeah. I didn't know nutrition was that important or I oh, forgot yeah. something. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, it's a whole lot. Your body might be too alkaline. It might be too acidic. It might Everything in your body is high cold or high hurt. And it needs to be leveled out. And how to do it is certain type of food. Yeah, because they told me stop the cars and leave them five or ten bags of potato chips along, packs of cookies. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you, you the cook, I'm, I, I like sweets. He likes the uh, potato chips. I like sweets. Yeah. And that's, that's my thing. I have to, I eat everything nutritious. I like herbs, vitamins, fruits, and all that kind of stuff. Been doing it all my life. Yeah. But I have a really, I have a bad sweet tooth, you know. So he said I'd be starved because yeah. he knows all, all herbs in this thing. <laughs> Here's your food right here. <laughs> Can you see it? <laughs> She's starving me. <laughs> but but you help me. But you help me. You know. But see, I eat the uh, uh, I. What I do is I buy a box of lemon peels, or I like the candy in a box of little pieces. They got some chewy lemon peels, huh? Yeah, you like them. That should have like made them. them. Oh, you like them? Girl. Oh, no. I know. And it took me off of sweets. All right. I got to eat the well, candy. I would, got I would me rather, diet candy. I would, I would rather to eat a little small piece of uh, little piece of candy like that mm -hmm. and then you can keep it in your mouth for a few hours like 20 minutes or something but that'll take it away then to eat a big old donut or you know a whole lot of cookies and stuff so that that has helped me out a lot 
probably had a whole bunch of And you know what? Uh, I always ask people, have they ever seen an elephant or a hippopotamus in the hospital? <laughs> they don't crave because they don't eat what we eat. Right, they eat what they have to eat. Yeah. They eat, but see, when your body... And they don't cook their food. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> when your when your body craves things, yeah. that means that it actually is missing something. Because sometimes we actually do have to have some type of sweet in our body. Sometimes it's all about balance. I got a, a taste for a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for the last three days. But then it's something that you're probably missing out of. You're probably missing that uh, I protein. I caught the message when you said it. The peanuts. I caught the message when you said it. I'm here straight to make the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I had been having a, a taste for uh, uh, spaghetti. Yeah. And, I, and it probably was the, probably maybe the tomatoes or something. Because like I don't really eat a lot of Oh, uh, carbohydrates at yeah. all, you know. But sometimes I do love some a good spaghetti with meat in it and stuff. Spaghetti, so macaroni and cheese—you got. Me. I can't eat the mac. I I, I I never got into that macaroni and cheese, but no. I, I understand that everybody likes it. Though. If it's hot, come out the oven. I can get that. As it sit three minutes, you know, you might have rice in the mac. <laughs> no, but uh, health. Your health is your wealth. You know, so, things have words that we don't really understand. This, this is what I want, want you to uh, take into consideration. Health things that we could talk about. We could talk about anything. Hypertension, diabetes, uh, arthritis, heart problems, things like that, things to avoid, uh, dietary uh, things that can help prevent. Those are things that just let me know in advance what you want to do. And, you know, I, what I do is I look up everything. I mean, being a nurse, I have to, I, I got to refresh my mind on a whole lot of stuff, but I like to look up everything. So when I tell you, 25% uh, of the people who do this and that, I want to be able to know that I, I'm telling you the truth. Don't talk just, about nothing that you can't right. send nobody to retain the information. And, and then, you know, and I tell them, like, most of my stuff come from CDC, because I, I did infection control and all that kind of stuff, so they come from CDC. Well, and I tell you, well, I got this from CDC. So you go look it up yourself, you know. But uh, that's what something to talk about. Another thing to talk about is our children, the health care, uh, people dying everywhere around COVID. We, you know, we can talk about we don't have to avoid COVID, but we can't be saying like, oh, the government is lying. You know, they just killing us all. No, I, yeah, it's a non test for me. I just do it. Like yeah, what it, you're saying I'm repetitious. Yeah, it's it's because, it's, it's uh, a touchy it's a touchy situation. Do you know that people are losing friendship with other friend friends yeah. over that kind of stuff? Yeah. yeah, I thought they were playing, but they serious. They they are really serious about that. That's that's worse than politics when it comes. What they're doing is they're choosing the government. If they had more faith in God, then everything would be more would be all right. And when you start talking about that, don't we? yeah, yeah, they talk. You know, they talk God, but they don't walk it. Tell about person foot and feet work where I eat. I know. Live, like, but see, but see, some of them, do. yeah. And and here's the thing: a lot of them walk around here masquerading as somebody, man of God, and you know, know God fearing. And, and those are the worst ones. I can't. I can't. I was saying it. something like I do most of the time. Something has been written, but I didn't know it until a person said to me, "I'm gonna learn the statute." And he said, "You know that's in the book." Now you should say some preachers are sent, and some just went. Mm -hmm. Okay, the big box church niggas. And the, if this is a church and I buy some courage, I'm going to know they own the women because they knew when the windows I ain't got no hundred women. Mm -hmm. But in them fake mega churches, right. like they want these people to say, uh, mad shoot. That's because Ron is trying to pass a crime bill. I see it on the radio, I always see it on the TV. They can't see. Yes, they can't see it on the TV. Right, right. I forgot they tuned in. <laughs> so, yeah, so. But anyway, I sometimes I break off on them and just give them a little something because I know they don't understand what's going on. And that's the thing because I have to hold back on some of the things that yeah. I say because I don't dig. I got to take that out. Yeah. Because there's certain things that you have trigger to trigger the foolishness that they think is being triggered, but it's not. And, People and, are and you know, you, so you have to. You just have to make yourself neutral if you want to stay out here for a long time. You, you, this is not how I think. You stay know. Out the way. Yeah, you know, I'm just bringing you certain certain things. But we got 
we have a whole lot of things that we can talk about that is outside of things that are so controversial. Mm -hmm. And um, in case if they don't understand something, you tell them if you feed a baby a steak, you don't choke. Feeding baby food, you keep eating. Yeah, that is. You can't give everybody a steak. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And that's what I heard my feelings. That's that they don't feel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here. Yeah. Tell me what's been going on with you. Uh, well, I thought I took a small spill on my door's porch. I've uh, never been hurt before, never been sick. So at 69, if you get sick or something happens to you the series, you either have to pay attention to it or go past it. I'm going to doctor tell you to stop drinking. And your lip, and he do he tell you that your lip is messed up. Right. Or your pants or right. whatever. But you keep drinking. So you didn't learn from what the doctor said, and it's going to cost you, not the doctor. Yeah, you know, isn't it kind of odd that as you get older, you get more hard-headed? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is kind of odd, isn't it? It, is bad, it seems yeah. like uh, when you're younger, you're hard-headed. It's hard to train you, but actually, they're more old. Younger people are more open. That's why I say we don't just have the youth problem, we have an adult problem. Yeah. Pay attention to what he's saying, because that is so very true. Yeah, because it starts at home. At home, and then your culture sometimes, that's the elders. Yeah. And it's our um, home. Some people are, are used to being slaves, like, you know, yeah. slaves to everything, slaves to uh, drugs, alcohol, yeah. to. That's why Kanye said people. you had a choice in slavery. They, the level that they should have took it at, they did. You always miss the clouds sometimes looking for the rainbow. The mm -hmm. rainbow is not coming out till the clouds are moving. So it gets real simple, and that's, you know, it was being said, it was being understood, but we missed it. And you had to be praying and keep creating your life for you to get back to it. Right. You just can't do it by yourself. If you think you can, yeah. hold your breath. Yeah, yeah. So you get, you get sense real quick. Everybody needs to kind of come together and teach, not reteach, but yeah. to teach, because some people are not... Uh, Basics. They, they haven't even learned habilitation yet, and we're talking yeah. about rehabilitating somebody. Right. And, then, and this is what the problem is mostly, because I've been in a lot of rehabilitation programs, uh, not as a customer, mm -hmm. you know, as a professional nurse, but when you are actually trying to rehabilitate someone, you're going at it wrong, because they've never been habilitated. That's why we're trying to uh, Rehabilitate. We got a little dog at home. Have you seen that little dog? But anyway, we got a little dog at home, and the dog is so big and huge. We can't rehabilitate her because she don't know anything. You know what do you know? You got to start from scratch. Yeah. You know, so that's what you have to do with these people. Yeah. And but these the programs that they have out for these people are rehabilitation programs, not habilitation programs, but. Rehabilitation programs, and I keep saying that we are three and four generations behind. If I rehabilitate you, wouldn't my job start and end? If you rehabilitate me? Yeah, if I rehabilitate my rehabilitation center, how long would they be open? Well, they're going to. I'm saying if they all got rehabilitated, they have to come back. Home. Oh, 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 I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, that's, that you know what you connected with that? Crime and the system. Right. Oh, that's a good one. That's I'm a really saying good you, one. You, you said it because you have to look at it for what it is. If, you, if they rehabilitate you all the way, the clinic is closed. You, who's going to pay? you got to have more customers. So until you get more, you keep doing what you got. Well, and, and what they're going to do is they're going to keep putting on a, a diagnosis. One more. What did you say? That's the same diagnosis in the street. If you cut the judge off from judging and the police off from policing, and the defender from defending, who you got left? Right. You you won't have anything, but see, you just have to be creative and come up with something else, because now you, you have been rehabilitated, so now let's go to phase two. You know, you can you can come up with like 10 different phases, but let's, <laughs> let's make them all work, you know, right. at least. You, I, I, That's what it is. They, they don't work. It, it's, I'll tell you exactly what happens. It's a book. And this book is designed for billing. 
So when you come in, you have to meet the qualifications for billing. If the billing, uh, in order for me to correspond to uh, your treatment, yeah. I'm going to have to say that you may not even be depressed, but you do feel kind of low that you, uh, yeah, okay, well, you're depressed. So we got depression on there, we got substance abuse, we got ETOH, alcohol abuse, we got this, that, on and on and on, right. on and on and on, you know. And these are the things that we have to di diagnose you. Now we got to diagnose you on mental health. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing after another. Then we have to diagnose you on uh, current events. We got to what's going on out here in this world. It's just so many little things that, you know, you have to be uh, treated on and it's going to go on and on and on. But the thing is, you never get treated. You never get treated. And I think part of the thing is presentation is everything. When you first walk in the door, you should be able to talk to a person and say, like, um, uh, this is what I have to offer and make it sound good, you know, Make that sound good enough for me to say, well, you know what? That person is right. Okay, I could I could stay here. But if you some of the places that I've been to, they have had the same wall paint on the walls for fifteen years. The same nasty carpet coming up on the floor for thirty or forty years. The same old fashioned tables and this Sometimes if it's just clean, a clean environment make a person think, you know, a clean, uncluttered environment make you think better. They all just told you that. Yeah. The first impression is the best impression. It is. Because sometimes you don't get to take what you say back. A redress. Yeah. 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 They get to put you in the mind the first time they saw it, whether it's pleasant or unpleasant. It's unpleasant. <laughs> It's and, that stays, and that stays in prison in your mind for how you first see But I'm, I'm kind of, we got a generation that's out there that I think that we can't do anything about right now. I'm not really sure if this is what I'm thinking. Hopefully, millennials? The millennials. The millennials in the 30s and 40s, aren't they? Okay, these are like in their 20s to 30s. What, what would you call them? X something? I is would it call X, them young, X, the younger class of our culture. Well, he, yeah. Me and you would call them that. I don't know if nobody else would call them. Well, they try to give them names, but the titles don't fit them. Yeah, it's so many of it. Because after the millennium, it gets X something anyway. But yeah. these, the younger ones that are coming up, they're out here. Those are, I'm talking about the ones that are out here just really gang banging. And, mm -hmm. uh, I don't even know what well, the purpose is. just lost. I, well, what do you think? I mean, how do you think that we can grab these people up? I mean, what do you think well, about that? The structure and giving them something to do. Structure. How do you how do you tell them like well your family? No, you show them. You don't tell them. You tell them if you're older, you can't do certain things. But if you're young in mind and heart, you can always guide them in the same exercise. That's how they learn. That's how you. They don't know they got a purpose. First of all, they don't know that they're a dang species. Second yeah. of all, yeah. third of all, they want our youth. Well, people like me, you, and Jeff, we in their way. As far as if they start listening to us, we in their way. Because mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of elders that don't listen. When the ears stand up, the mouth sit down. We always talking, but about what? What are we going with? We round the corner from slavery. Yep. They just ain't pushed the button. Oh, okay. You've been, you see. You've been listening, haven't you, to yeah. politics? What's been no, going but on? you know what politics is? It's dangerous. You know what war is when you go there with the guns. Politics is war without the guns. And if you don't understand and that's, that. That's more dangerous than anything. And if you don't understand that, the war is already over. Mm -hmm. That's why me and you and Jeff was talking about it's coming to a time when we're not going to be able to talk like this. We're going to be on TV. We ain't going to be on radio. We ain't going to be on satellite. That's what You're we going to have to remember yeah. what we said. Yeah. Even though we put the book out or whatever, you got to remember what we're saying. This is what we remember. 
to have a, the, poise, the poise we had for my mother and father. Mm -hmm. You could tell our upbringing, because I've never been inside a, a place where that would happen. I'm conscious of it, because my grandmother slapped me in the back of my right. head in 1968, sound like a gun run. Yeah, yeah. And I asked her, was something wrong? She asked me, she said, is it? I said, I don't know. What you give me for? I ain't touch nothing. I ain't yeah. because one time I got beat that that would be number 69 and said, what not? You don't touch that in other people's house. Right, that you is know, true. Yeah, if you break it, if it, if it costs a dollar, they can charge you $25 for it in their house. Right. And you shouldn't have touched yeah. it. Well, she stuck me in the back of my head because I always had bald heads. And I turned around and I said, what's wrong? She asked me what was wrong. Uh, I say, uh, you just hit me. I, she say, is it raining in here? I want to say hell no, but I know I get beat to death. <laughs> so, so she said, uh, whenever you're in a place with a roof on it, and open the door for later. I said, you ain't me like that? She said, yeah. But she said, you're a bad. Talk to me about the uh, the uh, hats. Remember, they used to, men used to wear hats all the time. They don't do that anymore, do they? No, that but you never could wear a hat. You never could wear a hat at the day. Right, you take a hat off. That's yeah, and you never could wear a hat on the inside. Yeah, when you, you come in, right you take a hat off. Right, so that's why I'm telling you, I'm sitting up here conscious that grandma might come out of the grave and walk back. Because you get the hat. I was in college, and I took my hat off the Kennedy King, and the boy said, man, you ain't in Englewood no more. I say, with my left, the grandma might walk down this hall. <laughs> right. She said, what's your grandma doing to you? And I told her the same yeah, thing right. I'm telling you. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, I don't do do that. And I'm cautious of a hat. Yeah. And then, you know, if you're around a lady, per se, with a uh, caliber of personality such as yourself, you have to address yourself like that. It's your appearance. You talking about your first impression. My first impression, when I came in here, I met you with my brother. I. I was correct on the things I do and how I carry myself. I know that I know the girls on the hood, mm -hmm. and you know hood, you know hood folks and all of those stuff. And I know the ones that got fans that been to Carnegie Hall and the White House, uh, uh, different places where they sit and eat and how they dress. It was according to what your mother had you done or your father mm -hmm. and uncle. You had people back then that cared about you, like we try to care about some of the children now for other people. Karen, but to catch on to Karen, so it would be enough of them. Right, because some things were just automatic that uh, you taught these children some things what to do, because I I, um, I know what a man is supposed to do to be a gentleman to a woman, mm -hmm. whether if he know her or not. When you're walking in the door and a man is right there and he's coming in before me, I expect him uh, for some reason to hold that door for me. You know, if he doesn't hold it, but sometimes I, I have walked in the door and and I open the door for me. And here he goes, go. I'm like, yeah. what did I When did I start? When did right. I become a gentle woman? Right. You know, I'm opening up the door for for you. You know, but I met a, a young man. I think he was about 20 years old. He held the door for me. He helped me with my groceries. Took him to the car. He was just, just he, he didn't like me. It wasn't no, nothing crazy. He was just a gentleman. He saw that I needed help, but he helped me to the car. He opened the door for me, put me in, closed the door. And he said that his grandmother taught him how to do that. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I taught my sons how that when a woman is coming to the door, you open that door for them. You know, doors like that. But children don't, I mean, people don't know that anymore. They don't yeah. open the door for you. They don't help you carry the, get the, the groceries the and all this all kind of stuff. They just look at you, you know. They choose not to know it. That's what me and you was on, too. We're going to go back to a few caliber things about help and this and that. Right, talking about. right. I ain't forgot them. But when we went to talk about the hat, you took me down another road. But it's, it's the same respect and knowledge that they teach you have for each other. Mm -hmm. And you understand that when you was talking about choosing, and I was saying something about Kanye West, he'd say slavery wasn't a choice. Right. And then people don't question what he's saying. They don't understand if it's not a choice, then why you don't why you still that under it. Right. So Well you're gonna have to tell me why too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have all the Jeff answers. Talk about, well, Jeff talk about it a lot too sometimes. You know how you are uh, Okay, if I got if I got a a, a, a gun bar bell on your hand, what would you do to stop it from hurting? 
I'll, I'll knock it off. Or move your hand. Right. We choose to be the slave. You know why? Because we, we, because we are going through our own little trauma. Mm -hmm. We are. We see ourselves as individuals. Mm -hmm. I came in this world by myself and leave out of this world by myself. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you don't open up your, yourself to other people, even your loved ones at home. Uh, you know, you, you kind of like, you're so used to doing things basically on your own. And during, and even slaves, you know, they, they still have to depend basically on themselves because it's a, it's a trust issue. And that's why we were in the name of That's together. why we don't have anything. They yeah. broke the trust issue. We haven't even got to that level yet. That's for a whole nother show, Bob. But at the same time, when you're talking about choices, if you choose not to want to do anything, be anybody, or move yourself around at whatever age of thought when it came in your head, help. My mother taught me you learn every day you live. Right. You do. Learning is living. When you stop learning, you're dead. Whether it's physical yeah. or mental. So that mental illness you're talking about that you mentioned in the part of the show. Right. This is all a part of the big scheme. This system right. turns you against everything. Right. I defy the laws of it because the creator guides me. I fear the creator, not people. Right. But so we I, separate I try, ourselves. I try to walk right so right. I can talk right. Because my grandma told me something else too. She said, if your feet don't fit your mouth, put your foot in. If you don't walk it, don't talk. That's a wonderful. That, that's good. I like that. That little double line uh, symbolism that grandma think you should pop on me. I used to couldn't read. First of all, I, under, I underestimated my grandmother because she went to third grade. Right. And I underestimate my mother because she went to eighth grade. But do you know that God put things in women, you know, put in me in? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the education. They so far ahead of me looking at me as a goofy. Women are more intellectual. Men are. You, are, you ain't got to tell me. I was a gangster all over this city and country. But in that house, I was real lost in the bitch, get eaten, freckle face, dude, stay out of the way. <laughs> you get your head knocked clean <laughs> off. Yeah, that's that's yeah. good. But it, it, See, your mother and your father are your first gods. You ain't no god. They everything. Yeah, that's true. And it's, it's your it's your march into the tomb. My daughters was arguing the other night, and I was telling them something, and they were saying, "I right, you seen the movie Gladiator?" Mm -hmm. well, and when the boy, the coward, killed his father when he squeezed him. Oh, okay. Right. And he said, and "Before you squeeze him, his father said." Your fears are my fault as a father. That's true. Not only was that poetic, it was real. Yes. I, I use it. I, my kids got to get out of See, that's what they say, sins of the father. Yeah, so, I, so what, what I'm telling you is, they was arguing and talking about uh, me being responsible for all 20 of them to be against each other or whatever. So I'm saying, um, I say the same thing I just told you. Your failure as a daughter is my fault. Your failure as a daughter is my fault as a father. And she was talking about, no, I ain't gonna say that. So then I'd have to say, you, you, uh, you, you are responsible for my success. I said, right. Right, that's true. <laughs> she heard my other sister talking about, no, no, I, I got six figures, now I got my stone. And I said, let me check this out. Which one of y'all sperm made you? I said, go on, keep talking to yourself, because you got out of pocket. You didn't really understand what you were saying, but I did. And it was easy for me to put you back in. But see, the bottom line is still, it was unity. Yeah. It was unity. Uh, yeah, that's what's on my card that I gave you, unity and the community. And, and, that's and the only people that look at the card in the back side of it is the people with a little intellect. Say, let me see what this is about. Right. And we should together. already know together you stand, divide as you fall. Yeah. So unity in the community, they don't scare nobody about it, but the people that's looking at it in a different way. Yeah. Like Jeff Ford and the Blackstone Rangers, the Blackstone over at the Kaaba in Mecca. He, they was linked to something that was far more higher than what the name was. They proved to be strong. But it's things that they look at that you say. 
When you say unity, unity it's presentation. Like I just said, they say it's Blackstone Nation. Remember? Mm -hmm. Do you know a nation is powerful? A nation they is have powerful. To, so they have, so they got to disassemble the nation and misdirect you. But but can't you see where that energy, that energy, like you said, it became more than just a person's name. It became a nation. That energy can become. It, That's why it could grow said, inside a family, a, a neighborhood, a community. That's why Senior said, "You can kill a revolutionary, but you can't kill the revolution." You come up and shoot all of us up in the art gallery. The art gallery still gonna open back up. Right, so did you kill the spirit of the art, mm -hmm. or you just kill some people? Right. Which is, you have to be a traveler to realize that. You have to be able to sit in one spot and travel. Because the earth revolves, and so do you. Mm -hmm. You do. Okay. If it's and three fourths of water, and you three fourths of water, the comparison is there. But well, we ain't here to teach nothing. We just mentioned something. Yeah, we just talked. Just here. Yeah. So if you catch something and feel it, because you always have to work from a number. But, one that, but that's, how you, that's how you learn is from somebody just talking. Yeah. Something's not just come. talking messy. Right. Somebody <laughs> Yeah. Somebody is gonna get something out of whatever we talk about. That's why I say if it makes sense to make dollars, it's not always money that you're talking about. The material of a dollar could be a happiness or peace that you learn learn to caterpillar yourself into more money or more peace in life. You know what I think that would help people in gaining a whole lot of things that they want in their family, their life and community teach people how to be humble because people now are teaching their children to brag oh i'm so this i'm so that i do this i do that they teach them how to brag they're teaching how to think that they're better than everybody else they're teaching this they're teaching that but it's all going to come down in the end you got to teach them how watch to the humble. movie the devil's advocate mm -hmm. teach them that his greatest thing uh -huh. was to make you think he wasn't there that's vanity. He said, that's vanity. the greatest. Yeah, that's what it is. Greatest. That's yeah. what it is, vanity. Yeah, that's I'll, just him, I'll just say it with you yeah. in a different way where you can sum it all up. <laughs> vanity. It, yeah, that's the, that's the whole word. We lost. It's vanity. We're, it's vanity. We're lost. And then you got to figure out why. Why is it vanity? You know, you got to uh, figure that out. If you know about humanity, then you don't, you, you don't have to go through vanity. But Shaitan is banking on it that you don't. People always talk about God, I don't even talk about the devil. But see he's so prevalent and present, he'll make you think that you making all the moves. I don't. But see if you if you look at the devil a different type of way and you in a way where do you, you know how they say silence is golden? Oh, yeah. When you don't pay attention to the gift devil and you pay more attention to God the devil can't harm you in any type of way. When you keep going around talking about that's the devil, that's the devil, that's the demon, then you giving them too much power. No, it's not. Everybody out here has a choice. God gave us. So you back to the choice. Yeah, our <laughs> choice. And God gave us our own choices right. to do good or to do bad. So when people are doing bad, don't say it's the devil all the time because it's not. It's you. That's called a blame game. Yeah, it's you. It's you. Yeah, right. Well, you know the devil made me do it. Yeah. No, it was you. You did it. You made your choice. You know, God gave you uh, the will to make your own choices, and you made a bad choice. That's right. When you start, when you start constantly bringing up the devil's name, you bring the devil up, mm -hmm. and you giving him. Well, you don't bring negativity with positivity. That's right, what that's what I'm saying. saying. You yeah. know, your day could be going good, but somebody say something stupid to you to catch yourself. So Satan is working them to work your nerves. Right, that's what I you say. If you, no, if I'm saying just be aware. I don't care. I don't talk about the evil that's caused this a shield. When the Creator got faith over you, it's, you know, when he with you, he could be against you. Right, and see, and that's the thing. So you, you don't even have to say your name. You got to study it. You have to know more about the laws of attraction, how that kind of stuff works. You keep bringing up, you keep saying bad words. Mm -hmm. Those bad words are manifesting. Mm -hmm. When that bad word manifests, it's around you. You don't give nothing bad that. No energy, um, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. That energy or that power. They tell your mother when she if she's birthing you, she wants you to be a singer, sing while you're in the stomach. 
She wants yeah. you to be a writer, right while she's in your while you're in her stomach. Now watch this. Fred Hampton was in his mother's stomach two weeks to three weeks from being born when his father was being murdered and his mother was trying to cover him up. I'm asking you that to get a uh, an analogy from you about what kind of DNA you think he can. And ain't special, but it's something you have to pay attention to. It does. Because if he was in that womb going through that. And he knew what was going on. He knew what was going on because I went to school for that child development. When he put, when they put the gun on her stomach, which is all true. That's why he said when he's talking to people, his birth certificate could have been his death certificate. Because you remember the guy in the movie said, we should kill the bastard now. Mm. I'm just saying, I know I'm saying yeah, 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 yeah. about the pregnancy and yeah. what goes through a child's DNA. Well, you, this is what I'm going to tell you. I look at it almost as a miracle baby because... They know. They know when, when the baby is in the mom's stomach, oh, they know everything that's going on. We did the, uh, <laughs> the uh, in school, they showed us the babies when they came out after this and there and they came out. The baby knew who the father was and the baby actually imitated with everything that the father did. At one day old, one hour old, the baby was able to do. The baby knows, he just does not know how to relate. He knows everything that you're saying, but he can't, it's like gibberish, he can't say, I wanna say, yeah. I wanna go here, yeah, I wanna go here. Right here. Yeah, but I can't do it, you know. Yeah. And a whole lot has to do with that mom. A whole lot has to do with that mom. Uh, aggressive mothers, the domineering moms, they bring up the worst, the worst sons ever. Uh, ones that are too timid, they bring up the worst sons and kids ever. You gotta be right in that middle there. Mm -hmm. Good and bad, you know, everybody. My great grandma's uh, son died a couple of weeks ago. He was, uh, I didn't even get to see him. I see him on the picture. Cause I, the day I came to see him, she had took the other little baby back and the mother to the suburb. Oh, okay. And uh, the next day she called me talking about the baby. Day. The baby was throwing up milk. They changed the milk. Oh. Uh, was it that? The baby uh, should have been drinking no milk. Oh. Uh, whatever it was. It oh, okay. Been. If it threw up, first of all, you got to remember how tough it is for me, you and Jeff to throw up. How it locks you in, hurts your inside. Right. It's it a baby. Yeah, it does. That information you say he can't. Right. Out there trying right. to, yeah. He can't tell you. I'm telling them, if he throwing up, that's pain. He can't be throwing up at that age. He just, what, what a week old or three days or something? No, a month, about a month and a half old. They didn't say what it was? They didn't have to say it to me, but they said, uh, oh, they went to the line. They were expecting it. They said it's the baby COVID. Oh, so, God. I, just, okay. I didn't even say, oh God, I, listen, I just said, if these people don't quit putting this empty on cold, I'm going right. to bust what I need. But right now, God, I'm going to back away from this one. Because mm -hmm. when they were expecting, they thought it was the cold stuff, and then uh, uh, they didn't birth the baby, maybe, or uh, the milk uh, should have been changed. First of all, put your tear down. Sit down somewhere, stupid. <laughs> First time the bed, we were the two up, I'm on that milk would we she ain't changed the milk. She changed the game. Mm -hmm. Right here, boy. Mm -hmm. But when I said it, they thought, you know, it's old fashioned milk. I said, Well, see, they, that's what all that's what the mothers did in my days. They all did the uh, recipe. Somebody had to tell them. So I come on. But I'm saying I lost my baby and it was uh uh I could feel his DNA, never seen him. So I know what you're talking about, about the father, and, you know, I didn't it, know that it had been done, but I could, I could yeah, experience the, it the the know what you're talking about. Just emotional, a, a person, a, a babies know who's emotionally connected to them. Because my son, he, he, would, he would pick up off of me when I was holding him in my hand, my arm like this, and somebody come around and, and he'd be, playing with all the people and smiling. And then somebody else will come around that I may not feel 
quite right about. Yeah. And he'll start crying. And I said, mm -hmm. Now yeah. I know. I, I know something. Baby wrong. dogs and babies, they know people. Yeah, they do. They do. Dog keep barking, babies start crying. Back up. I know sometimes uh, babies and dogs, they'll be barking at things that's not even there. Be like, what's your boss? Like, what is she? Well, that's so special in Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like moving there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, but it, it's, uh, it, it's really, um, it all makes sense because it's part of the world. All me and you sitting up here talking about it's a puzzle. Right. Put the pieces together, or uh, you'll be all night with a thousand. Right, and it, it shouldn't be so hard to do, but we don't have that community unity. Right. Like I said, we don't have that. Right. If we can do that, and everybody stop yeah, talking and just moving, yeah, you know, change just moving. Stop giving people money to this, when you've been giving money to 10 or 15 years, and they ain't changed nothing. But they close. I don't give my money to anybody. Yeah. To I'm just saying. But organizations but and stuff. But I'm saying the government, the state, and a bunch of other places have. Mm -hmm. And it's not in the results. They don't come check on the foot, the boots on the ground, the footwork. You got to check on any and everything. If you're cooking something, you got to let them back in on the store. Well, the they told us a long time ago how the government uh, spends our money like a. a uh, a washer would cost like twenty dollars. You know, uh, you, they just everything's just stupid. Three hundred dollars for a toilet stool, a regular toilet stool that costs like uh, ten, twenty dollars. You know. It, All right, I believe that. Yeah. So, and, and I learned that when I was in seventh or eighth grade. What? They no, they did a documentary on how the government uh, misspends our. Oh. 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 So, I, I don't understand I, how I they learned that too. I learned that when I was incarcerated. I got a whole some nice book. Tell you about your system and yourself. And reading is good. It, like I said, reading, reading is fundamental. Reading is leaders, yeah. yeah, it is really. I have to read something every day. I can't read books That's every day. That's a good mechanism, yeah. yeah. I can't read the book. I don't mind is that boy Playhouse you're talking about, you should mention. You yeah. 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 So, so you, while you're sitting around idle, you're thinking of mystery. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you think about this TV show? Think you might like it? Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. And, uh, <laughs> and, and other hostess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they make a show, and uh, the character of the show, the personality and atmosphere, it all make it all makes part of the show because you feel relaxed. You can talk about relaxing things. Yeah. It doesn't get tense because everything is not tight. Right. I mean, you uh, have to frown all the time. You smile sometimes. Yeah, you, you can smile. So, <laughs> you can smile sometimes. It, that's what it's all. You know what? If you smile, all you have to do, if, if you want to feel better, all you got to do is smile. And sometimes, just wash, you know, like wash your face and comb your hair. Then you feel a whole lot better too. So look out the window. You be smiling a lot. Yeah. Yes, you're living the jump. You won't be one because you're going to be laughing all the way to the car. I know. I laugh every time. I, oh, yeah, that is something good. Because you know what? It's, 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 it's natural. It's crazy because if you go outside, you're going to see something funny to look yeah. at all the time. If it's just somebody driving crazy, right. it's, it's just something that's right. if it, it, It's it, going to get your attention. It's going to get you. It, the way people are expressing themselves nowadays, too, is. I guess. Yeah, you have to be careful of that too. Yeah. You know, everything now got a caution light on. When we just live our life, you know, children can't go outside and play like they want to. You know, I feel bad for them because we played too. ourselves away. And we came yeah. in when those lights came on. Yeah, and or the lights would be on when you get in because you're going to get beat. Yeah, I mean, it, it was just really. Your little tail going to be on fire. You know, time, you got to come in, it's time to eat. Yeah. Eat. And we ain't yellow. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, one, 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 one back down on that was on clean drive, so then they got to what the old fast food places. Mm -hmm. Everything we do now fast food, you got lines you gotta stand in. Ten fifteen. Oh wow. Back. I'm not eating at none of them places. Cool. I, 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 I try to avoid like, restaurants altogether. Yeah. I don't really do because that's you know and, and see not only that, that COVID, that's how it how it was spread through the fence. Yeah. Yeah. 
from when people are sitting here, the air conditioning brought the air here, past my table, past your table, past his table. That's one of the ways that uh, they, you know, when they were doing the research on how did this group of people find it, and they found out it was related to one restaurant. And then it was related to another restaurant, oh, and then another place. You know, I've been had all the time. That's when we first started. When, when, when the world, you got all the info. Yeah. They should be listening to your show. You know, it's, it's kind of tough for us because if we ain't got a Hennessy bottle on the table and a naked lady, they ain't. <laughs> they just hard for the past. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> turn up. We've been turned out. Turn up. Turn up. So, yeah, there's just sometimes watches, even if you don't have a Hennessy bottle and a naked lady on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, you know, sex sells. You know, a week to Franklin. Sex does sell. A week to Franklin and Gladys Knight never took a string on. Blow you out the auditorium. But they were talented. They, see, they were talented. And they it, used their talent in the right way. It, see, that's why I say it. it's about presentation. Mm -hmm. Presentation. Right. If you know how to present yourselves, it's just about presentation. Yeah. That's all you gotta do. Yeah, so you can always come back to things we talk about in the show because it's, it's all parallel, it all levels out together. Right, that's the thing. Hopefully, if, if we keep talking about the same thing over and over and over, maybe it's something might bring you. Hey, you know what? I, I, I may be part of the solution. Maybe I could start becoming part of the. Uh, and that's good how you have to go over things, but you have to remember to go over yeah. Because people don't get it on the first try. I didn't a whole lot of time. But it's important that if you have a access to, to a television show and you have something to really say to children out there, maybe to some mothers who saw something happening, this is a person's opportunity. It's so many, um, I didn't know how many can TV producers that were out there because we don't see each other. We don't know each other. And uh, only a few of us actually do know each other. Yeah. So, because uh, you see how it is, but when you go in there, you know, yeah. you go into the room where you're going to, and that's yeah. it. You don't really see too many, yeah. many people, but. Um, the boys was down there, you saw everybody. Yeah. No, so, but, you know, you don't really get a chance to see a whole lot. Yes, ma'am. But it's all totally of those different. people can be doing something. I feel like if you're going to do something, you have to make it count for something. If you're going to make a song, make the song worth uh, singing. If, you, yeah. if you're going to paint a picture, paint that picture worth, uh, you know, do the very best that you can. If it's inspirational, we got a long ways to go. This is no joke with black people. We have a long ways to go. In a short time to get there. In a short time to get there because who knows where we're going to go. Uh, Top off it. Oh, you know what? I, uh, I was talking about the geniuses and all these smart people. Uh -huh. They can find people in a hole in another land. Right. They can uh, go to the moon. They do a lot of things. So I asked some guy on the show, I say, one side of the earth is what? He said, burn. And the other side is what? Flood. So don't you think if you had a little sense, you good old geniuses, that you could make a pipeline in the earth filtered water right. to put the fire out of here where it's burning the land. Right, right, right. Or even if you had to go to the stream as far as carrying water, putting it on trains or planes, whatever, you got all the transportation. And as you say, you got all the sense, you're a superpower. How come we can't soup no water over there? Oh, that's too much like right, huh? Right. <laughs> what do they say in a perfect so, world? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then don't let me be the one came up with. No. Sim simplicity oh. becomes complicated, you know, because that is anything that a person can make money on. <coughs> that's that's. And enough. you know what? I'm saying that for the goodwill of the world, if you want to give me some money, you can. But do you understand what I'm saying? We just exercise in a practice that why not? Yeah, why not? You got one water being wasted that's flooding people. You got a part of the country over here that's burning people out. Right. 
you can't put the water over there to cut them the heat off and you running trains across the ocean. Right. That is. That I mean, excuse me, that just came up. I right? know. That makes wow. a lot of sense. Yeah. I just, you know what? We make sense. Food, we should, well, really on your show, we've given them food for thought. Mm -hmm. So they know just how we can eat now you eat the right food. Right. Your thought is a lot better. Just a process. Just food for thought. Yeah, that's why I like talking old Jeff. He got a little food going. He always have a thought. Yeah, he does. He does. Yeah, that's my brother. So, you know, we, uh, we've been apart 30 years, but just to come back together 30 more. Yeah, I thank the creator for what he do. Because I'm coming over here with Josh. One of my roadies that played ball with me. Uh -huh. Yeah, good friend. So he said I had to meet him. He kept telling me about five or six months I'd be too busy. Uh -huh. That's how I passed out. I'm in depression. I always running for everybody. I ain't doing nothing going nowhere no but nobody. Like that. See, That's now why I was down at your TV on show at uh, 10 to 2. <laughs> You just didn't know where I was. You heard in the parking lot. And I'm saying, she, is she drinking? You told me uh, he was in the parking lot. lot. I was like, parking lot. Yeah, I said, Jeff, they got a demon move, not one of them girls now. <laughs> so, I, uh, so when well, she didn't tell me what I was in there, and the people began telling me to go down this room, go down that room. And that showed me that they didn't know nothing they was talking about. They were just scared me to run around. That'll get you beat up. Yeah, that's God just took that out of me <laughs> to beat you up more. Because you lied to him. Right. They didn't even know you. Right. Oh, did he swore? Oh, yeah. And it might be Mark, he said. He said, okay, stand there. Go down the hall. Turn my head out. Mark, is swore? Okay. So you signed in. But I'm saying that was a facade. You run, me run. He don't know that I'm walking on 15s, and they talk when they stand up too long. Uh, they they tell you to find a chair. Uh, so I sit down in the chair. I thought walking around the hall and went to two different places. And one lady told me this is just enough for property room. I said, my these 15s said, don't sit down and call us the best bet. You're going to be sorry at everybody who walk around here. Right. The I called you and you say, uh, I'm, I'm back, I'm uh, near there, I'm about to pull up and this and that. And then, uh, I don't know how I got to tell you I was down at Can TV to park and I saw said, you said, I don't know, man, they fit for with this, dummy. <laughs> you left the dummy off but I hit a bass in your boy. But you said, <laughs> Hamilton, goofball, that's what I do, my, that's what I do my producing. And I said, yes, ma'am, didn't I? I didn't give you a word back. <laughs> I got straight on west and I didn't want to drive back. I didn't even get on the expressway, you know, wrestling, cussing, talking. I came straight down western, put up with some trucks for 10 blocks, and left them in the dust. Well, let's say goodbye. I'm so glad that you was here to say goodbye. Yeah, goodbye. See you next week. Yep. I mean, you uh, know. The, the three weeks from now. Three weeks from now. Thank you. Bye-bye. Peace. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. So. Yeah. It's your land.